Hi and welcome along to another episode of The Wedding Band Show with myself, Brian McDermott. On today's show, I caught up with Mark Kennedy from the band Hot Fuss to learn all about the band. Make sure to show the guys some love on their social media channels. And if you're looking for a wedding band, check out hotfussband.com. Let's get into the show. Mark Kennedy, welcome to the show. Thanks a million, Brian. Thanks for having me, bye. Hot Fuss, uh, Ireland's premier wedding band. <laughs> It's actually Ireland's top number one premier wedding band. All oh, right, yeah, is. yeah. I think whatever <laughs> band says it the most is actually just a premier band. Well, whoever has it on the most posters and signs and stuff like that, I usually find it's yeah. the, you, you ever know, see... like everyone's pull-up stands and everything in the background. Oh, yeah, yeah, you to need to have top them. number one premier wedding band. Do you ever see you know? the there's new bands that come out? They're only launched a month and they've got Ireland's premier wedding band. On them. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I hear that. <laughs> Well, you won an well, look, award recently, like you're, you're fairly, the wedding's online thing, so. Yeah, yeah, like, and I mean, that's kind of a game that we never really got into too much before the last, like we'll say, maybe two or three years. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's an interesting game because it's a, a kind of a business game and kind of a fair play to you game, which yeah, is, yeah. Uh, I mean, I like the fair play to you games, man, they're good, <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, like those online awards are always kind of nice to get, you know. Well, there, yeah, um, no harm to have the name of the one that we got. No, no. Well, you got last place, didn't you, or something? <laughs> That's right. That's why we got to stay away from them awards. Yeah, oh, uh, prestigious. So, Hot Fuss, you're ba- is based in Galway, is it? Yeah. Well, the boys are all based in Portumna in Galway, so it's re- it's owned by Mark O'Reilly. Yeah. Um, I'm just one of the cogs in the wheel, really. Um, yeah. An so the boys cog, are all based in. Huh? An important cog. Oh, I mean, probably the vital cog. I'd say a lot of people would say, you know, but uh, so. Uh, I'm based here in Saigo and they're all based in Portumna and mm. they've been on the road since like 2010 I think probably Yeah, I yeah. joined in 2014 I think and oh I changed the whole game that's like, when the awards yes. started rolling in then. <laughs> that's when it all started coming man <laughs> and, and so, the, yeah. yeah you play all over Ireland yeah oh yeah I mean that's kind of the thing is that it's not we rarely do local stuff to be honest which is a bit weird yeah. you know like some bands just find their area where they do most of their work like mm. I mean Ours is probably like Cork or Kerry or something. And it's kind of hard to pinpoint why it is that those are the areas that we do most of our work. But it's probably the amount of pub gigs that we do in. I was like going to say, yeah, you or, do the cover scene as well. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We, we yeah. kind of cross over both of them. Like uh, it, in truth, Hot Fuss was probably set up as as a, a cover pub band band. And then mm. it just transformed into the weddings. Um, uh, now, they were well into the weddings by the time I had joined. Yeah. But I they did a lot of work in in Killarney like I mean nearly every week you know yeah, and then all yeah. of a sudden that's where you get known and and that's where most of the work comes from but we travel everywhere like I mean you could you could have been in Letterkenny one night and then West Cork the night afterwards you know um and it's kind of weird that that slowed down now for the first month or two of this yeah. COVID crack you you didn't really know how to do yeah you're sitting at home looking at the missus going Shit, I haven't seen you in a long time <laughs> you just drive around Sligo to yeah get out yeah I was still doing the same amount of mileage, but I was doing it within the 5K. <laughs> I was just driving round and round just to feel normal. And um, yeah, so I suppose on the cover scene then, if a couple uh, sees Hot Fuss like in the Keys or that, do they expect that set list then for the wedding or? Yeah, it's a weird one. I mean, you probably know this from yourself is that um, you're always trying to find the balance as mm. a band when you do the cover scene to keep it what they call middle of the road, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. If we go into the Keys in Galway and do two hours of rock, I mean, we can do it. But yeah. you're trying to mind the business too as well. So we do a lot of those kind of middle of the road songs that cross over both of them. And I think that's what weddings are now anyway. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, you might be doing your your half an hour of jives and waltzes at the start, but like it, it, the game has kind of changed a little bit. Like, And people are looking for the kind of rock and the other stuff too, you know? Yeah. Um, well, the, I, I mean, the couples like, are younger, I suppose, than they were. Yeah, well. that, they're getting younger. I mean, I didn't want to say that because you know what? So, but that's what it is. The couples are getting younger, and the game is getting younger. It is like you know, mm. and but you, you're always trying to find that balance, though, because you find that couples sometimes will come to you and say, "I just want two hours of rock and pop, lads. That's it." And you're like, "Well, just keep an eye out for Auntie Mary and Uncle John because they're going to want some waltzes and some jives mm. and stuff." You're always trying to find that balance between them, and uh, as a wedding band, versatility is key. Like, you know, you can, you can, I don't think you can really go in and say, we're a rock band now and we do rock stuff for your wedding and you better just go with us, you know? Mm-hmm. So well, you, you can, you can, but like one out of every five weddings would be class, but the other four, you'll have a lot of lulls. That, I mean, that's you the know. problem. Yeah, that's the problem. Is it, And you need to keep it consistent, you know? 
Yeah, and I consi- think consistent set is probably key to that too. When people hear waltzes too, they get a bit like I. I always say like we only do about six minutes of waltzes in the whole night. Two yeah. two little mi- you know two little mixes. Yeah. Um, about three minutes each. You know, but mm-hmm. that's enough to keep uh, like that Auntie Mary happy. You know. Yeah, I mean, pe- the, some people think that um, when you say you're doing waltzes and jives, that oh, well, the band are doing waltzes and jives for two hours. It's mm. it's twenty minutes at the start, like usually yeah. for us. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And. Uh, and like it, it, you'll find as well, like you, you got to give the crowd credit too, and you've got to give what you would call the older ones credit as well. Like you, you don't think they know '80s hits like they do. You know what I mean? Mm. Like they know disco and all that kind of stuff, and they know dance and pop stuff from the '80s and even right up until now. So, like it's a it's a set that tries to cover the whole lot. We get rocky for about fifteen minutes usually at the end, like, and that's it. Yeah. You know. And to be honest, too, it's not even. Sometimes it's not even like you, you can have a band that on paper looks like they're doing the right stuff, but they might they might be terrible. You yeah. know, like if you if you're if you've got a really good sound and you're really slick um, yeah. and you're doing, you know, nice jives or country music um, the young people will like it, too. Yeah, you know, like, they're like the bands on the country scene, like your Johnny Brady's and these, you know, oh, um, yeah. well, they're I mean, doing real stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, like, like that's the thing as well is that um, it's not that's not just an old person's game, which is you know it, you can fall into that kind of trap to think it is like because mm. young people will jive as well, boy. They will jive yeah. under the table, half of them, like <laughs> you know. Well, that's it. I think some people just have bad experiences from really old school wedding bands. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it is, and they they they, they this is going to sound bad, but they kind of think they know what they want in their head, mm. but then when they see what like let's like. We've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of weddings. Like, you know, mm. we got a pretty good judgment of what's going to work and not work. And when usually when people see that work and then they just let it flow, you know, which is what you really should do at a wedding is just yeah. relax and let the whole thing flow. Yeah. Like if you're, if you do 10 weddings in a row and there's a song not working, you're going to drop it. Like, oh, straight away. You're not like, going you know, to just like, keep why, doing if, it. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the definition of insanity. Like is to do, keep doing it over and over again when it doesn't work, you know. Yeah. What kind so, of uh, wedding packages does uh, Hot Fuss have? Did well, you ever it, get into the ceremony music end of things? We we never did it before um, I joined. It, well, certainly not ceremony music is something we've never done. But um, like I do a one man show as as well as hot fuss. So we do like the you know the the reception drinks and all that. If you wanted me to go and do the reception drinks, mm. there is another thing that some people do as well is where if you don't want your DJ and you want to go back to the the front lounge like. Uh, I do the front lounge as well instead of a DJ. So the band does two hours and then you go off and have your drinks. And like, that's a weird one because you would think everyone wants a DJ, but that, some people have used that a lot, you know, just, yeah. to, you know, me in the corner of the bar with a guitar for two hours. There's afterwards. a lot of weddings where that would be a lot better than a disco, to be honest. Yeah. You and know. we've, we've got that quite a few times like that, that people doing that, you know, you now we do the DJ package as well. Like our guitar player, Johnny is the DJ as well. Yeah. And he's not just in fairness to him. He's not just the DJ who goes, I'm a DJ. I plug my phone in here. It's playing. Really good. Yeah. Packs up the gear. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That's the worst thing. But, <laughs> but that's yeah, given, that's that given people a bad name too. Oh, it's you awful. Know, where, and I, I've, uh, I seen it one night, um, a friend of mine was getting married and the drummer, and it's the cliche, the drummer had a laptop a hit yeah. play and for about 25 minutes never even looked at it was yeah, putting, I know. putting away I mean, the kit and you're like look, here like yeah yeah you gotta have respect for the game too you know and um, yeah the people who just turn on the thing and start taking down the gear I mean it's it and has it makes to be no sense because like it's easier to DJ than take down the gear <laughs> yeah, why would you I'm like to, I'm looking I'd at the lads the taking DJ. down the gear, going, "This is way easier standing here playing oh, the music." Like, yeah, right. I would love to be the DJ because I have to carry out Johnny's gear every night, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> I'd way prefer to just be the DJ. Like, Jesus. yeah, no, it makes you know? it makes no sense to be uh, yeah to do that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, to answer the question, we do like we do try and cover everything. I mean, before COVID hit, like we were trying to work on a package that was like hot fuss sort you out from morning to night, pretty much for the weekend. You know I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the whole weekend, like, you know, nearly. I mean, the second day stuff is a bit weird because, I mean, you'd probably be sick of us by the time one o'clock came around on the first night. So, yeah. uh, you know. Well, that only but, uh, really uh, works that, too on a maybe a Saturday or that because, yeah, you know, if somebody booked you on a Friday, you can't really take the night after on a Saturday. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing as well, yeah. I mean, you know, if you're lucky enough to be booked out for most weekends, you know, that it's usually just a one night thing anyway, you know. And it's nearly, as we're recording this now, it's nearly 400 days, I think, since... um we yeah. stopped playing. How have you been keeping busy? I mean, we've all been keeping busy different ways, probably. Um, we try and keep in touch as, as much as we can, but like uh, I've seen the lads once since this started. So mm. 
I mean, you, everyone just kind of gets on with their lives a little bit and we're just kind of waiting for it all to kick uh, back in. Yeah. But I mean, the boys are doing well. I mean, they have their families and all that kind of stuff down in Galway. Um, I think there are paints in the houses and everything else that everyone else is doing, mowing the lawns and yeah. all that kind of crack. Because it's a weird one because um, it, it, even though it's been 400 days, I mean, you we're still not conceding, if you know what I mean. Does yeah. that make sense? Like, it, we're in the wedding band business and like we're just waiting for our job to come back. And the know? job, it, it's not a question either of whether you will or not. It's no, no. All, it's all there in the diary. We are going back to work, but it's... Yeah, that's the thing. And I ready, mean... Yeah. And that, it's not like we're not working. I mean, we're we're dealing with inquiries and cancellations every single yeah, day, which is know? worse than ever. Like the admin, oh my, it, the admin I mean, has it, gone way up. Yeah, yeah. So you're still you're actually working twice as much as you usually would on the in the background. You're just mm-hmm. not getting to go out and do the gigs like and like every week it's changing. So you you don't know. And the gigs I mean, are nearly we, the easiest bit. Yeah, that's the thing. Turning up to the gigs is the easiest bit. It's all the admin in the background, and that has gone chaotic now. Like, so we're still working away. No, no one is conceding that we're, we're going to get back, and that's the idea. Like, you know, yeah, it's yeah. when will Hot Fuss and every other band in the country get back onto the roads? And it's, it's I mean, we don't know. It's not looking that likely that it'll be like this summer is looking a bit weird. I've been talking to other bands and stuff about inquiries from from couples, and like we'll keep mm. dates in the diary as long as you want it, you know. Mm. But I mean, I'd be worried about this summer again and any chance of any of that coming back, you know? Yeah, well, one day you, you kind of wake up and think, oh, yeah, we're we're nearly there, you know? And then yeah. you hear some news about vaccines paused <laughs> or, you know? <laughs> I know. And then you're like, oh, here, where are we going? Like, so. I know. I mean, it's it, it seems to always be one step forward and two steps back every day. Every time there's a little sliver of good news, they're like, hang on now, everyone hang on because we have two more don't, bad things to tell you. you know? <laughs> don't get so ahead of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, I think that, um, well, that brings me on, I suppose, then you as a groom, um, mm-hmm. you're oh, getting yeah. married. Yeah. So, and you moved your wedding, didn't you, to October? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we were supposed to get married on the 20th of February this year. Mm. And, um, up until Christmas and even after Christmas, we, we were getting married on the 20th of February because yeah. it was going to be either 50 or 25 at that stage, you know? Yeah. And then, um, obviously, we got the wallop where they're saying you're going to be locked down until now, pretty much, you know? And, uh, I mean, we could have done it with six, but we just didn't want to. We were just like, we, we just, 25 was kind of, we were already at our limit with 25, you know? Yeah. So we have it pushed out now to October and... I, it's so weird because I'm in the wedding business of dealing with the inquiries every single day, but I'm also on, on the inquiry side every single day, Yeah, which is we don't know if it's going to go ahead. We're supposed to get married on the, 6th, on the 7th of October, and uh, we still don't really know if that's going to be the case or not or what the numbers are going to be. You'd have are we going to, to be in wave number six by then? You know what ha- I mean? No, you'd have to imagine it's going to be 50 people by October. I mean, it. I had to imagine last April when we were sitting here going, Nicola, by February, we're going to be getting married. Like, don't worry you know, about it's it. So, I'm you in the wedding don't. business. I know these things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you just don't know now. Like, as I said, like all of a sudden, like our numbers are down and all that kind of stuff a little bit and it, they're starting to open up a country and then all of a sudden effort are coming out and they're going, wave, wave four, lads. Be careful of wave four now. And you're like, Jesus, how many more waves, lads? It's like Strand <laughs> Hillman, the amount of waves that are coming to this thing. Like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. No, well, hopefully, hopefully by October. Uh, I'd say, but I'd say re- realistically, anybody that wants over 50 people is probably looking to the next year. Yeah, that, I, I mean, yeah. I, I would say probably the same thing is that if you're hoping to have your full 300 guests, like, I mean. Oh, no, it, forget about that, yeah. That'd be I don't 25. Think it's yeah. <laughs> All the Bell Mullet so. weddings would be out till 25. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a small wedding in Bell Uh yeah. You did a cover too, um, Just Can't Get Enough. Yes, that's that right. Good. Yeah. Have you any plans yeah. to do any more or? Yeah, well, we, I mean, we never done anything really during COVID. I done a lot myself, like, during COVID, but um, it, we did cover it Just Can't Get Enough because we had literally just learned that song. Mm. And, you know, every so often you're trying to keep the kind of promo stuff up and the yeah. little videos out. And, um, yeah, so we did Just Can't Get Enough. We probably do have plans in the pipeline that once we get back into a room together, we're going to have a thousand ideas flowing, the same as any other band, like, because yeah. you'll actually end up getting the love for it back again. And it... Uh, the idea of it just being the business might actually go out the window a little bit. And you'll go, lads, let's do this song and let's do mm. this song and let's record us and let's get a video done. And uh, all that kind of buzz will probably come back in. Um, it's going to be hard update to set though, Brian, isn't it? Because you don't <laughs> know what the hell happened in the last year. Well, the, the the new songs now, like, you know, I don't know what's, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that's, what's going on. We missed it all. Here's the thing that's going to happen that wasn't quite there at the start of COVID, right? I'd tell me if you agree with this or not. 
we're going to be picking our set lists or newer songs, we'd say, right? Mm. From TikTok, 100%. Well, definitely, yeah. Um, and we weren't quite doing that before COVID. TikTok was just kind of there, thereabouts. It's just starting. COVID, like TikTok picks what the number one songs are nowadays. Yeah. So we're going, and I mean, we're going to have to learn the fucking dances up on the stage as well. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> um, you know? Well, I was only here, I will not read TikTok, but you know the new Bruno Mars one? Um, yeah. That'd be great in a slow set. I was only thinking yesterday. Oh yeah, Jesus! Uh, it, isn't it weird? Fair play to Bruno Mars, by the way, for walloping out like soul and funk oh, and yeah. blues and all. You know what I mean? It, yeah, the quality, like it is like something that could have come out, you know, 50, 60 years ago. Yeah, absolutely. Like you know, and I mean, there's a lot of uh, I call it wallop out nowadays. That's even yeah. hard to cover as a wedding band. You know, even the number one song sometimes now. There's an awful, lot, like, there's an awful lot of rubbish out. Oh man, you know, I mean, we'd probably call it rubbish, Brian. But yeah, I know, but like, it, no, but it is rubbish. I think nobody can. <laughs> Nobody can argue, and even like my kids, like I, I don't think it goes into their heads as songs. You know, yeah. it's, it's kind of just something that's there, and then it's gone the next day. Yeah, you know, it I goes, it, go, it goes into their head as content. Like, yeah, but it's gone. Then, They're not singing the song in in three or no. four weeks time. You know? And and that's the thing as well with the whole TikTok genre of it is that there's another one then the week after, you know. Yeah. And then they're just doing that dance instead, you know, which, which is, is good if you, arses. which is good if you put out some things that are a bit rubbish because they'll all be gone in a week. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah, well, I, I must keep that in mind, man, if I've ever released some rubbish. Are you, are you on TikTok? Is Hot Fuss on TikTok or No, Mark no, Kendi? no, no, no. We wouldn't even know where to start with TikTok, man. I mean, I don't, here's the thing, and I'm not that old, like I'm 29, but I don't understand the TikTok game, Brian. I don't know where yeah. to start with it. Like, it's like I don't know whether to go on to it and try and be funny or just shake my ass like a young one. Like, what gets you famous? Dude, both, <laughs> I don't know. If, if you started shaking your ass, it would be funny. So, the <laughs> two birds. Um, I don't know. You haven't seen. I tell you, it's good, man. It looks good. Uh, and Instagram Reels is another thing. Then, yeah. Um, our friend Keith, our guitar player, was sending me um some earlier on. Is that starting to kick now? Is it? It seems to, but to be honest, a lot of this stuff is is a lot of work. Um, yeah. Let me see now. I don't know if I can play this here. I'll show this to you because it is good. I can always edit this out. Tom Cardi, do you ever hear him? No. Oh, I know this one, yeah. You'd be well able for this stuff. <laughs> that's TikTok and Reel is there in one. That's it. It's so funny though that that's, I mean... But the uh, amount of work in that video for him yeah, to I know, do, yeah. like, yeah, that's the thing. And but and it, it's for a ten second hit. Took him a few hours. Like, yeah, easily. Yeah. yeah, it's it's for a ten second hit, man, and that's it. Like, I don't know, Jesus. It is. It's hard to see how wedding bands could benefit from TikTok. Well, the game know? is always changing for bands in Ireland as well. Mm. And like, uh, think about this, right? For a wedding band in Ireland, maybe fifteen years ago or twenty years ago. They, they wouldn't probably have done promo videos. No, you know what I mean? No, there was and nothing. they probably would have been looking going, I seen one of the bands down the road there was doing a video. How how would how is that going to work? Mm. I guarantee in five years we're going to have to be thinking about TikTok content or whatever the hell the thing is at that stage. Like, you know? Yeah. And it, they, COVID has actually taught bands a lot of stuff because what happened when COVID hit? They all started learning about cameras and streaming and yep. sound and recording songs and everyone was recording at home. Whereas like you would have thought, well, I have to go to a studio now to record a song. But everyone just learned it themselves. And the thing about people who are in the wedding band business and just the band business is that we're we're naturally in that creative industry. Mm. And we're always thinking about, well, what's the next creative thing that I can do, you know? Mm. But there is and something I, like, while it's handy having the home studio, there's still something a lot better. Being Like you said there, being in the same room, you know, oh, like, yeah. and bouncing off each other and like even recording a song. Um, you know, we'd be doing something here. I'd send it to Keeve. He'd play guitar, send it back. Like if you were sitting beside each other, you might go, what about this or what about that? Where oh, yeah. when you have to send it over and back, it's kind of, you're just going to go with it. You're not going to say it. Yeah, well, that, try and that's the way. thing. Like I hated, the one thing I hated about um, the industry was having to go and practice like a load of songs and learn and mm -hmm. learn and learn. I can't wait, man, to do that <laughs> again. I can't wait to sit in the room yeah, and start yeah. practicing again, you know? Which is so weird. Like, come here, here's a good one for you, actually. And it's probably topical for this because I was thinking about it beforehand. Um, do you learn every single first dance in the game? Every one we're asked to do, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So if you're asked, you'll learn it like. Yeah, like sometimes you get a couple that'd say, Well, they might come come to you fairly late. I always say give us two months' notice if you can, you know, because yeah. we roughly meet up once a month for rehearsal. Um, mm -hmm. if they come within two weeks and there's a lot in the song, I'll kind of go, Well, look. 
you know, you might, you know, if we're not meeting or we won't have time, I might kind of tell them, look, go with the CD at this stage. But that yeah. that's rare enough now, unless the song is a big number. Because uh, it's yeah. just it's just interesting to learn songs. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, like we certainly wouldn't have mind to do it. Like, I mean, ours is kind of 50-50, to be honest, is that like uh, learning the song, you kind of, they have an idea in their head, I think, a lot of the time, the couple of what a song should be. And that's the track that they gave you. Like, yeah. so... I mean, I would be of the opinion that, well, why not just play the MP3, you know, yeah. or whatever. You know, we used to call it MP3, whatever. Yeah, you know, I keep saying CD, CD and I get slagged then that it's an MP3, but yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. even an MP3 now, really. It's not even think, an MP3 yeah. anymore, probably not. But it's just an interesting one because I've heard, because I've been listening to your show a little bit like, and I've heard different kind of consensus on, on yeah, people saying answer. you should definitely learn it. You have to learn the first dance, lads, or else you're not a real band. Yeah. And Oh, I know I've that episode kind of, now. Fight and talk. Huh? I know who said that now. Fight and talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know who said that, but I know someone who probably did say. It. Um, but I mean, I you know, just if you're a couple out there and you are actually watching this, is I like I, I want to push the other side of it a little bit as well. We will learn your first dance, like, and we do loads of them. Yeah. But a lot of the time, they you have the idea in your head of what the song should sound like, and that's what that's the original song you've listened to. Mm. So why not dance to that? And we can play it, like you know. Yeah, I just think there's sometimes there's a lot of emphasis on the if you're the band you have to play the first dance and that's it. But what if you make if they don't like it, you know, and they want the original? So yeah, no, we we'd probably have fifty percent of couples that come along and just ask what I think, and I yeah. give them the list of songs, and then there's probably um, the other fifty then probably fifteen twenty percent go to MP3, and yeah. then the rest of them ask us would we learn it? Yeah, um, well actually that's that, that's another yeah that's a good side as well as you said that. Uh, you have a list of first dance songs mm. because some couples don't have a song that they want their first dance to be. They don't know, like, or there's no special song to them or anything like that. And I mean, I'm sure the Brian McDermott band is the same as Hot Fuss band. There's we really 10 or 15 songs that are those slow songs that can be a first dance. Like, you know. It's actually a video I said at the start of lockdown I was going to do and never did it. Um, it'd be nice to have a three or four minute video of all your first dances. Just oh, yeah. clips where you could send it to somebody and they could hear you actually doing it. But oh yeah, I'm going to do that now. Thanks for the idea. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but it it's is going to be all in shared as well. If yeah. I could tell the couples <laughs> anything out there, if you want to hear any word from American, from Hot Fuzz, stop picking it shared as your first answer. That's actually Jesus. Uh, well, I don't care what they pick now when we're back because like perfect isn't. <laughs> I haven't sang perfect in a year and a half. Oh my god! So it's Jesus. it's it's new again now. It's like oh Jesus, you you be the love in the Galway girl in the wagon wheel. Never to five hundred miles and all. It, it, oh. My my biggest fear is um, now we did like we were off in I think it was March the fourteenth, and we did a small wedding at the end of August, mm -hmm. and I was a bit worried going in. We'd a rehearsal before the wedding, um, but it was fine. It was like everything just you know. But now I'm thinking it's a long time to remember yeah. all the words and stuff. Oh man, you know. I mean, so we're gonna have to do a few rehearsals, but you can't schedule in them yet because you don't know when you're going back. So, and uh, I don't want to scare the couples or anything like that. Like, but. <laughs> I haven't a clue of one note, man, the hot fuss set anymore. Like. <laughs> I don't know yeah. one note. Yeah. It's sad. So, it'll, it, no, I, it'll definitely come back. But if you're going to see a band to book them, don't see them at the first wedding back, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, if you're a guest at the first wedding, I would say don't bother going to that one as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> If it's just announced that weddings can happen next week, don't go to the wedding next week. Oh, yeah. Jesus, don't go or leave after the fecking, after the meal or something. Yeah, it'll be ropey, the it'll be ropey for a while. Out of there. <laughs> it'll be ropey for a while. Um, so, what's the, so what's the best thing about having like a year off in Mark Henry uh, land? The, be the best thing for, for me about having the year off is c kind of, like I was saying earlier on, is the little bit of upskilling, I suppose you call it, in the professional world. But it's yeah. just learning other stuff. Yeah. Because I'm not going to sit still. Like, I mean, there's only so much PlayStation I can play, really, as well. Um, I loved learning. Like, I've been learning a lot about the streaming game and, and the video game and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And, like, it's hugely relatable to the to the music game, too. So, um, it's all I've interconnected, yeah. Yeah, it's all interconnected. Like, and I, I've been kind of doing that for, for the last couple of months, anyway, uh, going hard at us. There's but, going um, to be an awful explosion. Like I, you know, I've been in video a few years now, so mm -hmm. I've always kind of had a camera in the van and a few clips of weddings. But I think when we do get back, there's going to be an awful explosion of live wedding clips. Um, yeah. Because everybody is starved for content. You know, yeah. all the wedding bands that haven't been playing. So the yeah. minute they get back, they're going to be recording gigs left, right, and center, yes. and putting them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. It's such a, they definitely will be, and they'll be taking those. And people are afraid of the live gig clips. Like bands are afraid of the live gig clips because it's unpolished to a certain well, extent. I, I actually think um, that's why we get 
kind of most of our work online because and you hear the odd time where people would say that to you mm -hmm. you know I'd say have you seen our live videos and like yeah you know love them because and I can stand by if a girl is looking at us from Australia it's exactly what we sound like you yeah. know so you know yeah. because you'd be a bit worried if you had a nice polished uh Promo, promo video news. and then somebody saw it and booked you and then you turned up and you were like we don't really sound like this you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd, you'd feel yeah, a bit I mean, bad that's, like. that's certainly a worry for some people but like you have to back your game too you know what I mean yeah. like you you have to be confident that when like look you're the same as us brand you've done hundreds and hundreds of weddings like we know we when we get up there we can get it going like you mm. know and that's the thing so really whatever content you want to put out promo content if it gets people in, once they get there, you got to be confident that you're going to do the show that they're expecting, you know? Yeah. And people, um, people want to see the crowds dancing. They don't want to see the band. Like, yeah, that's the thing. They, you know? And because that's what people remember is the night's crack. You know yeah. what I mean? And you can't get too bogged down on the whole music of it. Like it's a, how entertaining are the bands? I always say that the wedding band game, it's not a music game, really. It's, no, it's no, the entertainment it's business. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing when couples go to see bands at weddings, standing at the door, it's okay mm -hmm. to, to get a gauge of the room, but like you shouldn't really be looking at the band as if you're at a concert. Yes. Um, they yeah, might yeah. be cutting, you know, they might be doing a song cut into 500 miles and you go, what, that sounds terrible. But if, yeah. if the floor is full and everyone's, you yeah. know, lepping around, that's what it's about. Like, And especially the idea of, well, I don't like that song as well is a big one for couples. I don't really yeah. like that song. It, well, the floor is full. There's 200 people on the dance floor. You know what I mean? A wedding, a wedding band is really more for your guests than it is for you. Yeah, that's, oh, what absolutely. I'd, that's what I'd yeah. say. I remember yeah, we yeah. got married and we had two bands, Castle Dargan, same as yourself. Oh, yeah. And um, I heard two songs. One of them was the first dance <laughs> and I heard one song of the second band because I was sitting down in the corner having a pint with my two cousins. That was it. Oh, yeah. I yeah, could yeah, not tell you one other song that they played that night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it must have been good man who are they <laughs> <laughs> but the, but that's it no it's just because like when you're getting married you know every time you turn around it's like oh you know thanks to, you know you look great the food was great mm -hmm. you know I haven't mm -hmm. seen you in years do you want a drink yeah. you know you're not you're not like like you said at a concert yeah. looking at the band yeah, yeah. And listening to every note they're playing yeah like you you, should, you shouldn't really be treated as a concert like it, this is no. part it's of a party. the entertainment it's a nice. party yeah yeah, uh, but back to what you were saying about the people are going to start live streaming their gigs and, and stuff like that. Um, I mean, that there is probably that coming down the line. I think this this whole video content and streaming content for us, uh, just got, I think it just got fast-tracked, Brian. I think mm. it was probably oh, going to yeah. burst anyway, mm. but just COVID just fast-tracked it in, in, into the ether. Like, so I, I, I think it's going to be there probably for the, in the long run. Well, the technology is there. Sure, it's really easy to do it now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so it's so user friendly, like for people to get out and learn it, you know. So, um, I think that kind of video and streaming content of of stuff, and I mean, you see weddings getting streamed, live streamed now, like as in there's only six people allowed, so that you know another hundred people are more. Like, yeah, last week, um, I was doing a wedding video, and the church had a full live streaming setup. Yeah, audio and everything, you know, going out live. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Where would you get it? I know that's the thing. Yeah, and I mean, like the company I work for now, a little bit like while this is going on in studio of like. We, we're streaming weddings all the time. We're streaming funerals all the time. Like all of that kind of stuff is is going out into the streaming world now. Like, you know, yeah. and I think that even weddings, like you, you, you could be doing it for the, because people are all over the world now. Like people might pick the streaming setup anyway, even if there is going to be 200 people at the wedding, you know? Yeah. They might still say, well, let's start streaming it, you know? And I think that's definitely, it, it should be kept as an avenue even after COVID is finished. But the one thing I think couples should remember um, with the video, my video hat on is, Live yeah. streaming a wedding um, is a lot more work than, oh, yeah. you know, like a videographer turning up is one thing. Live streaming, it's a whole different animal. So yeah. to just say to your videographer, you know, oh, you know, can you live stream the wedding as well? It's not that simple, really. No, no. Yeah. And here's the thing. And not that I'm saying, it, oh, don't get bright, but it shouldn't be the videographer that live streams your no, events. No, it, it's really, it is a separate job. It's a yeah. separate job. So if you're thinking about that in the future, and you will be, I'm telling you there'll be couples thinking about this. You book a videographer, you book mm -hmm. a photographer, and if you want to stream, your videographer doesn't stream it for you because yeah. he needs to get the creative stuff. So, he, you know he's what I mean? enough going on without, yeah. you know. And, and like you're trying to pick the creative shots that you're going to put into their video afterwards, which is like a montage amalgamation of all the mm -hmm. day. You, if someone's live streaming it, there needs to be a live streaming company. Like that's, yeah. you know what I mean? And they Different can, thing yeah, they're because they can monitor it. You see, when you're yeah. videoing a, a wedding, you're not monitoring the audio, you're putting recorders around and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that that is, yeah, for sure. So keep that in mind. Yeah.
Um, and one other thing before we go, um, you've got a podcast with Ray. Ray yes, McAndrew, I do. The Ray McKendry podcast. How's that going? Or? Right. It's not so bad. I mean, we... So the Kendi Ray podcast is pretty much just us talking whatever comes into our heads for the most part. Like, it's not really directed at anything. Mm. But... It's been hard during COVID. We've been doing it every week, but I mean, when you have nothing to talk about, I mean, <laughs> it's so weird, man. You're trying to come up with the really the utmost of, you know, yeah. to try and talk, but it's going well. I mean, we're kind of starting to take it a wee bit serious. We've been doing it for like over two years now. and You're well over 100 episodes, around. aren't you? What's that? You're well over 100 episodes. Yeah, we just released episode 109 yesterday. And um, we're kind of, we're, we're kind of jumping into the whole game of, well, can we actually make this like a viable like uh business to a certain extent you know because mm. we never would have thought we did we you know you kind of have that opinion of ah it's just two boys talking shite in the corner you know yeah. whatever but like when someone from the outside comes in like uh sensei brendan tierney you he ends up going <laughs> lads you know you, you can monetize this kind of thing and make it you know take it serious you know yeah. to a certain yeah. extent so well i think he's trying to do that i think you should be videoing it anyway that was my my piece of Listen, advice uh, I think we should be videoed too, if I'm being honest. I've been trying to video it for the last, I don't know how long. The problem is, is that we're so stringent with our editing. that we Yeah, need... you're too worried about it. Yeah, like... Uh, just do you're... what I do. Just turn on the camera, talk to somebody, and then that's it. Done. I know. I mean, I would love to do that too. Listen, you would have a talk with Ray, Brian. That's really yeah, what I asked. Yeah, have a talk with him, yeah. I'll come down. <laughs> I'll come down. down. Me and Brendan yeah. will call down the same day and sort you out. <laughs> no bother at all. So, Hot Fuss, um, people can... Google Hot Fuss, I suppose. Find you yeah, all online, I mean, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So search Hot Fuss Band and did you, like search hotfussband.com oh, yeah. or Hot Fuss Band on, um, on Instagram and Facebook and all that and it'll come up. Uh, send us an inquiry. If you're worried, if you are uh, getting married and you have a Hot Fuss booked or anything like that, don't be afraid. Just get in touch. We're all, this is one thing about COVID, right? The bands and the couples are literally 50-50 in this together. That's the yeah. thing. And so are every, every other provider as well as the same way. You mm. don't know what's going on and neither do we, so let's get through together. Yeah. That's what I'd say. <laughs> no one knows what's going on. No one uh, does. But well, that's it, Mark. Thanks for coming on the show. No and, bother. Uh, stay safe and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Brian. <laughs>